Ek jylle, vandag kyk ons dan nou na die gedig by die robot in eerste laan, dier maar die tak van asweging, ouder gewoonte weer vir jou voorlees, en dan sal ons begin met die verduideliking. Goed, by die robot in eerste laan, twee paar voete gerts oor die teer, sy arm en nek is so stuif en seer, sy been is so lam van gisterse staan, ingehaak volg hy gedwee waar hulle gaan, Motorse bande knars tot stilstand. In die blikkie klingel 5 cent in die rand. Hy reik die vis en chips winkel van eerste land. Hier by die robot waar hy die dag omstaan. Sy arm word geruk en geplik en hy skrik. Toe sy voet dom oor die pijp een kan toe soek. Ons beter geld krij of ek los jou hier. Sis die tsotsie en sy asem reik na bier. Sy hart klop vinnig soos die van een bankkind. Hoe sal hy weer sy leeplek van hier kan vind? Die verkeerslig klik en die engines brul saam, sy dove oe bewind opwaarts geslaan. Trek dring leie fietse klokkie. Hy buk aan af en trek aan sy sokkie. Die verkeerslig klik en die band skeer oor teer. Sy arm en skouwer is so stuif en so seer. Een motorrijdtjeer af en ver weg dreene bus. As hy dood om toch net wil kom haal, dan kan hy verewig en altyd ris. Die tsotsie skraaf sy keel en spoeg gestraal. Geld klingel in die blikkie en leid aan stil. Die duive koer in die kentjie jil. Mami, hy is blind, roep Piep a dochterkie sag. Hy draai sy kop skuins en hy wag. Hier is nog tien rand, sê die vrou. Koop vir jou iets om aan te kou. Die verkeerslig klik en hy hou aan met wacht. Die tsotsie plik om in die seer arm en lach. Goed. So from this we basically picked up that the poem is about two people, a tsotsie and a beggar. And they are standing at a robot like in the picture here. Um, begging for money, basically. Okay. Uh, so, waar handel die gedig? What is the poem about? Die gedig handel oor a blinde bedelaar, a blind beggar, wat by a robot staan en bedel vir geld. So, it's about a blind beggar standing at a robot begging for money. Hy word forseer om elke dag daar te staan en te bedel dier a tsotsie. So, he is forced to stand there every day and beg by a tsotsie or a criminal. Ons weet dat die blinde man afhankelijk is van die tsotsie. We know that he is the blind man, is actually dependent on this tsotsie. Because it says there, want hy word dier om gedreig, dat hy hom nie sal terugvat na sy leeplek nie. En daarom moet hy doen wat die tsotsie vir hom sê om te doen. So, because we know that he is dependent of this tsotsie, because the tsotsie tells him or threatens him and says, he will not take him back to the place where he stays. We'll look at the word leeplak a little bit later again. And because of the fact that he won't be able to find his way back there without the help of the Tsotsi, he then does what the Tsotsi says. If we look at the aspects of the gedig, the poem, um, aspect of the gedig, the ruimte, the space in which this plays off, Die gebeure speel af by a specifieke verkeerslig. So everything in the story happens at a specific traffic light. Die een in eerste laan. In, I think it was the re-exam or end of last year's exam. I can't remember exactly now. One of the questions was, wat is die ruimte van die gedig? And they just said, anything that says verkeerslig of verkeerslig, Dit vertel ons van iemand wat bedel baie verkeerslig, that's fine. As long as you have verkeerslig in jou answer, you are good to go. Dan nummer 2, die man by die robot of die verkeerslig, tree soos een robot of soos een machine op, wat nie beheer oor homself het nie, en dier die ander persoon gemanipuleer moet word. So, the robot that we're talking about, um, is kind of twofold. So obviously it's talking about the traffic light, verkeerslig, but also about the man's way of acting. So the blind man 
is acting like a robot or like a machine who has no control over himself and has to be manipulated by the other person. Eh? If we look at um, what the Tzotzi is doing, he grabs the man by the arm, he leads him, he takes him here, he takes him there, all sorts of things like that. So he has no control over himself, he needs to be told what to do. Daar is a vaste rhyme scheme aan die gedig, so there's a set rhyme scheme in the poem, pa rhyme, except in stanza 6, behalve in strofe 6, waar ons dan kruis rhyme met, cross rhyme. Die vaste rhyme patroon verbeeld die blinde se dagelikse routine, um, waaruit hy nie kan ons snap nie. So the rhyming pattern kind of creates an image of this blind person's daily routine that he cannot escape from. So it's this whole thing of, I am waking up, the Totsi comes to fetch me, we go, we beg, we come back. We go, we beg, we come back. That whole um, daily routine, all the time, every time the same thing. Die gedicht bevat ook baie voorbeelde van klanknaabootsing. So the poem has a lot of examples of klanknaabootsing, onomatopeia. Um, want dit is hoe die blinde sien. So this is how the blind person sees. So dier die geluide wat hy hoor, bouw hy a prankie van wat om hom gebeur. By hearing the sounds, he builds himself a picture of what is happening. So by using the klanknaabootsing, the poet is actually um, forcing us to see the world through the eyes of the beggar. Daar word ook van die reek en tas in te gebruik gemaakt. So smell and touch is also used in the poem om die leeser binnen in die gebeure te plaas, net soos die blinde dit so ervaar. So it places you in the center um, of the happenings just like the beggar would experience it, so too do we then experience it. Daar is progressie in die gedicht, there is progression in the poem, um, en dit volg die dagelijkse gebeure van die dag in die lewe van die bedelaar. So it follows the daily occurrences in the life of the beggar. In strofe 1, we have twee pare voete gert oor die teers, soos hy loop, so they are walking towards eerste laan. Strofe 2, die gebeure by die roe word, by, word beskryf, hy staan heel dag sonder pauze, so in stanza 2, the happenings at the robot, is then described, he is standing there the whole day without a break. Strofe 3, die Tzotsiese hart handige geplik en geruk van die blinde word bespreek. So in stanza 3, the Tzotsies manhandling of the blind person being pulled and shoved and all of those things is mentioned. So met ander woorde, hoe die blinde hanteer word, how the blind person is treated, is explained in stanza 3. Strofe 4 dan, sy dove oe bevend opwaarts geslaan, oor die dreigement terwijl die verkeerslig saam, uh, die verkeer saam beweeg. As die robot groen word, het beklemt toen die ongelukkigheid van die blinde, en versterk die idee dat niemand om, oor hom omgeen nie. So, in stanza 4, he talks about his dull eyes that are um, pointed upwards, or that's looking upwards. And this comes after the, the threat that the Totsi made to say that I will leave you here. So um, as he's doing that, the traffic is moving away from him, away from the robot, which then emphasizes the unhappiness that the blind person has and strengthens the idea that no one really cares about him. Strofe 5, die starige verkeer, a fiets beweeg ook verder tot by die robot, so in stanza 5, it's just uh, a continuation of, you know, life carries on, uh, traffic is going and coming. Nummer 6, um, iemand geef vir hom geld terwijl hulle by die robot wacht, so someone gives him money while they're waiting. Strofe 7, iemand gooi nog geld in die blikkie in, so someone gives more money, and then in strofe 8, as gevolg van die vrou wat, jam, wat om jammer kry, remember in stanza 7, is where the girl says, Mommy, he's blind. So it's the first time, basically, that someone realizes, oh, but this person is blind. And because this woman feels sorry for him, kry nog 10 rand omdat hy blind is. So he gets another 10 rand because he's blind. 
en die Tsotsi verlekker hom daarin dat hy baie geld kan kry. So the Tsotsi is getting all excited because he's going to get a lot of money on that day. Die thema dan van die gedicht, the theme of the poem, mens is dikwels aan anderse genade oorgelever. So people are continuously at the mercy of others. Okay? In this case, it's not just people in general, but especially um, homeless people or people with disabilities, as is the case in this um, poem. On seen it in gedicht, so we see all these things leading to the theme in the poem through the following: the genadeloze of gevoelloze of hardhandige optreden van die tzotzi, so the merciless or emotionless or manhandling of the tzotzi towards the beggar. Sy arm word geplik en geruk en hy skrik. Ons beter geld kry of ek los jou hier, soos die tzotzi en sy asemreik na bier. Die tzotzi skraap sy keel en spoegestraal. Die tzotzi plik om aan sy seer arm en lach. So all of these are examples of how the tzotzi is mistreating the beggar. Dan die universele probleem word dan ook aangespreek in die gedicht, so a universal problem is also discussed in the poem, en dit is die uitbuiting van weerlooses, wat dier misdadigers gedoen word om te bedel, en dan die bedelaars se geld te vat. So it is the mistreating or the exploitation of um, those who cannot fend for themselves by criminals, who, are, who then force them to beg, and then the um, criminals take the money off the beggars, which is basically what's happening here. Good. Strofe 1, 2 pare voete, voete gerts oor het teer. Voete of gerts there is klankknaboten, dus a skier geluid of a knars geluid. It's the sound of friction as they are walking on the gravel or tar road. The word gedoeie means submissively, so he follows submissively where they go. Please take note the colors. Um, sy arm en nek is so stuif en so seer in gehaak vol gei gedoeie waar hulle gaan en aan haak en waar en gaan, alliteration, assonance, all of those things. Sy so arm en so nek is so stuif en so seer, alliteration of the S sound, Bind die strofe saam, it binds the stanza to a unit. We have a lot of S alliteration throughout the poem, by the way. And then alliteratie van die G-klank en assonantie van die double R-klank, again, binds the poem to a unit. Interesting, this one, I didn't think that this was a necessary note to put in, but a few years ago they asked uh, this poem as well, I think it was in 2017, and they asked how many people are walking, and nobody could answer that question. They say twee pare voete. That means there are two people walking. Twee means a loop here. Because twee pare, two pairs of feet, makes it four feet. Thus, two people. Okay? So this is going to be the beggar and the tzotzi. Dis die bedelaar en die tzotzi wat hier loop. Sy arm en sy nek is so stuif en sy seer. All of those three lines there. Hier die vertel vir ons die bedelaarse situasie. This tells us the beggar's situation. Hy word geleid dier iemand en hy moet dit doen. Al voel sy lyf seer en stuif van die vorige dag. Hy voel gedwee wat vir ons sê dat hy weet het gaan nie help om te stry nie. So this explains to us the beggar's situation. He is being led, he is being manipulated by someone and he has to do it whether he wants to or not. Even if he is all stiff and sore from the previous day, standing the whole time, he has to do it. Um, and because he follows submissively, he knows it's not going to help if he fights back. He might be killed, he might be left for dead, anything similar to that. Okay. Then you'll see throughout the poem I've highlighted the ends in um, orange. Dit is wat ons noem polisendeton. Um, die gebruik van die woord en beklem toen die acties en gevoelens van die bedelaar en dit wat om hom gebeur. So these ends emphasizes the actions and the feelings or emotions of the beggar as the, the poem continues. Um, 
in this case say arm and neck is so stiff and so seer emphasizes that both the arms and the neck are stiff and sore Strophe 2, motorse bande knar stot stilstand in die blikkie klingel 5 cent in a rand. We've got the assonancy of the I sound there. Um, binds the poem to a unit. The word knars is klankknabootsing, onomatopoeia. Die skiergeluid of knarsgeluid, sound of friction or grinding as the, the cars stop at the red light. Um, die woord bewys dat die kar in die stade gaan nie, so this also tells us the cars are not driving slowly. Hulle moet vinnig, hulle ach vinnig rem en dit veroorzaak die knaars geluid. They have to brake quickly, which then causes this um, knaars sound. The word klingel is also klank na bootsing, also onomatopoeia. Dit maak die geluid van die geld in die blikkie na. It mimics the sound of the money in the tin, so the money is jingling in the tin, which means it's probably, well, it is a five cent and a rand. It's coins, it's not paper money. Herreik die fish and chips winkel van eerste laan. Die gebruik van die bedelaars en reeksintuig. Laat ons glo dat hy honger is, of dat hy lang klaas geëet het. So this tells us that the beggar is hungry or he hasn't eaten in a long time um, we don't have examples of police and diet on here but I just put it in as a reminder and then here by the robot waar hulle die dag omstaan die bedelaar spandeel sy hele dag by die verkeerslag nie net een paar uur nie so the beggar is there the whole day not just a few hours um, police and diet on again I'm not going to explain that every time it's the same throughout Sy arm word geruk en geplik en hy skrik. So die polis en dieton en die ruim woorde geplik en ruk um, beklem toe in die mishandeling van die bedelaar dier die tsotsie. So here, the polis en dieton helps to emphasize the uh, mistreatment of the beggar um, and then also because of the plik en ruk, the emphasis is strengthened. Okay? Uh, ons beter geld krijg, ek los jou hier die aanhalingstekens die aan, dat ons hier te doen het met die tsotsiese directe woorde, so this is the direct word of the tsotsi, hy dreig, he threatens die bedelaar, um, dat hy om nie sal terugvat huis toe, as hy het min geld krijg nie. So he threatens the beggar, that if we don't get enough money, I will leave you here, I'm not going to take you back to where you stay. The word sis die a vergelijking on. It indicates um, a comparison. It's going to be more of a metaphor than a simile, but it's a comparison nonetheless. The word sis is the klank wat a slang mark. So the word sis is obviously the sound that a snake makes. Dier die gebruik van die vergelijking, of dier die gebruik van die woord sis, vergelijk die spreker die tsotsie met a slang. Die woord vertel ons meer op die, oor die manier waarop die tsotsie met die bedelaar praat. Hy is ongeskik en vieslik. So through the use of the word sis, um, the speaker is comparing the tsotsie to a snake. The word also tells us more about the way in which the tsotsie speaks to the beggar. He is rude, he is not nice towards the beggar. Um, this could also indicate the dangerousness of the tsotsi. Okay? So, asem reik na bier, hy is gedrink, um, so he is drunk, dis moendlik waarvoor hy die geld wil hee, um, om nog drank te gaan koop. So, he is a drunkard, and he probably going to use the money that the beggar gets to go and buy himself more alcohol. Die es alliterasie, um, en die klank na bootsing, versterk die idee van die slang, so the es alliteration, and the onomatopoeia also then strengthens the idea of the tsotsie being a snake. The word klik um, is klank na bootsing, die geluid wat die verkeerslig maak, is het van kleur verander, en dit laat die bedelaar weet die motors gaan begin beweeg of stop. Dit is hoe hy sien of die verkeerslig oorslaan of nie. So the klik, the clicking sound, onomatopoeia, and the clicking sound is when the, the, the robot lights turn from one color to the other. And it gives the beggar the idea of when the light is red, when the light is green. So this is how he sees the changing of colors. 
Sy hart klop vinnig soos die van een bankkind, is een vergelijking, het is een simile, die bedelaar beskryf sy vrees om op straat geloos te word met sy hart klop, hy sê sy hart klop so vinnig soos een kind sy hart as die kind bang is. So the simile here is the beggar describing his fear. He says his heart is beating as fast as that of a child who is scared. So he is scared of being left on the street. Now it says, who select weer my leeplek van hier af kan vind? These two lines expresses the beggar's fear of being left in the street. So it describes a vrees om op straat geloos te word. Hy is blind, so he is blind. Hy is afhankelijk vir die tzotsie om om terug te vat na sy leeplek. So he is um, dependent on this tzotsie to take him back to his sleeping place. Now, hy weet hy sal jou moeilijk doodgaan as niemand om help nie, so he knows he'll probably die if someone isn't going to help him, en al hanteer die tzotsie om slag, kan hy steeds niks doen sonder om nie. So even though the tzotsie is mean to him, he knows that he will not make it without him. Um, kyk ook na reel 16, die bedelaarse oobewe, en hy kyk op, dit wees ook dat hy bang is. So this part here, the last line here, also indicates his fear. Hy is bang. Then if we look at the word leeplak, die woord neem die menselikheid vir die bedelaar af weg. So this takes the humanity away from the beggar. Hy het nie een blij plek nie, has no place to live, maar a lay plek. He has a, a place to lie down, like an animal, ok? So dat die aan dat die bedelaar a haveloose persoon is. So this indicates then that the beggar is a homeless person. He doesn't have a home or something, he probably sleeps somewhere under a bridge or something like that. Die verkeerslig klik en die engines bril saam, the cars are driving away, the engines bril saam, meaning the engines are being revved, they are leaving quickly. Bril, again, klank na boot sing, dit is die geluid wat die motors maak as hulle wegtrek, so it's the sound that the cars make when they leave, hulle rai vinnig, they drive fast, we already spoke about that. We have alliteratie van die weeklank, en assonantie van die A-klank, en dit beklemt in sy ervaring, hy is bang, sy dov-w-w, nee, that, that shaking, dov-w-w, B-O, B-wind opwaarts geslaan, and then the double A sound as well, and then put this in D-ton, again, not gonna explain that every time. Ok, tring tring rai fi, a fiets klokkie, is in versie omgekeerde woord oorde, oorde, we spoke about that when we did die nieuwe kind. It's supposed to be die fiets, a fietse klokkie, lui, tring, tring. Die omkeer van die woordorde beklem toon die geluid en hy hoor tring, tring wat vir hom dan sê, die, dit is a fiets. So because this, the, the uh, beggar cannot see, he has to hear the swapping around of a fiets in tring, tring puts the sound first, which tells us that he knew a bike is coming by what he could hear rather than what he can see. Click and skier and tring tring, all of these are klank na bootsing and vertaal vir die bedelaar. Daar is a fiets in die omtrek, die klik en die skier verduidelik weer dat die voertuig tot een stilstand kom en die verkeerslig is rooi en hy kan nou tussen die voertuig in beweeg om geld te kry. So the onomatopoeia, the tring tring tells him there's a bike somewhere nearby. The click and the skeer sound um, explains to him that the cars have stopped and the traffic light is now red so he can now safely move in between the cars to get money. So arm en sy skouwer is so nek en so seer, so it's basically a repetition of line 2 on per herhaling van reel 2 Maar die woord so is bijgevoegd, that wasn't in the first line, so is added um, there. En dit beklem toe in die aanhoudende pijn en ongemak wat die bedelaar ervaar. So it expresses the continuous pain and un, um, the, the uncomfort or the discomfort uh, that the beggar experiences. 
So out of the safe and here again has the alliteration of the S sound, which emphasizes the pain. Eh? If you stub your toe, besides the colorful words that you use, most of you will say, ouch, that was sore. Eh? So that sound um, is uh, seen through the repetition of the S sound here. Uh, we said that the car or the light is red now and the cars are stopping and again we have a lot of police in Dierton. The uh, motor right cheer off all of those things. Now he says, as the duetum toch net welkom hal, dan kan hy vir ewig en altyd ris. So the beggar is tired of his difficult existence. Die bedelaar is moeg vir sy moeilike bestaan. And wens eerder dat hy kan doodgaan. He wishes rather that he could die, dat hy nie meer hoef te lei en dier ander manipuleer te word. So that he doesn't have to uh, suffer and be manipulated by others. Die totsie skraap sy keel en spoegestraal. Die totsie weis sy verachtelikheid. He shows his despicableness. Dier die slijm of die flim wat um, achter sy keel so if we look at the two words of the of the, the or the ideas or the thoughts of the beggar and the actions of the Tzotzi, the beggar is thinking, oh please, I just want to die. I'm tired of all of this. And the next line we have the Tzotzi that's just spitting all over the place, which is a, a clear sign of oh, I don't care. Okay? So we have a definite contrast between the two characters. The one is soft and kind and suffering and the other one just couldn't care less. Good. Done. Um, we spoke about this a little bit now, but there's the notes for it. So it was contrast to see the Bedelar and the Tzotzi, contrast between the beggar and the Tzotzi. The Bedelar is bruis, he's frail, and lay a moeilike bestaan as gevolg van die vreedheid or the cruelty and the verachtelijkheid, the despicableness, van die totsie, wat lekker lewe dier die bedelaar te gebruik vir sy inkomste. So we have this frail little um, beggar who is um, being manipulated and being cruelly treated by the totsie and then the totsie lives a lacquer life but the poor beggar is suffering severely. We have Buddhists in the other one again. I'm not going to explain that again. The word cheer is klank na bootsing, onomatopoeia, die geluid wat die motor ruit maak, um, the day dog dat iemand om raak gesien het en vir hom iets wil gee. So it's the sound of a car's window opening. So this could be that someone saw him and wants to give him some money. Um, just the word drien, we had that before. It's the rumbling sound of a bus. Okay, the geld klingel in die blikkie, again we have that, so again he gets um, coins, we spoke about that in the previous slides as well. Um, koer en jil klank na bootsing, die rustige gekoer van die duive en die opgewonde geskreeuw van die kenkie, is in contrast met die gevoel van die bedelaar. Hy is bang en ongelukkig met sy situasie. So we have onomatopoeia, koer is the cooing sound of a bird, Yul is like a little bit of a, a, a scream, but an excited scream, basically. So the, the calming cooing of the doves or the birds and the excited scream of the child is in contrast here with the feeling of the beggar. He is bang in ongelukkig met sy situasie. He is very scared and unhappy with his situation. Then, mommy has blind people dochter ki sag. Hy draai sy kop skyns en hy wacht. So, even though, al is die bedelaar nie gelukkig met sy situasie nie, even though he's not happy with his situation, weet hy toch nog steeds hoe om die mense te manipuleer. He still knows how to manipulate other people as well. Hy hoor hoe die dochterkie opmerk dat hy blind is. So he hears the girl commenting to her mother, that he is blind. It says there, the daughter ki piep sag. She tried to quietly tell her mother, but she, the beggar still heard that um, she said that. En omdat hy dit gehoor het, wacht hy, omdat hy weer die maag gaan om bejammer en nog geld gee as hy net een bykie wacht. So because he heard 
the girl saying, Mommy, he's blind. He knew that if he turns his head a little bit and waits, surely she will feel sorry for him and then will give him some extra money. So he still does um, know how to manipulate people, even though it's not necessarily something that he wanted to do. Uh, the word pipsach, so pips is a moi, so she's trying to do it quietly so that the beggar can't hear. We spoke about that as well, and we have discussed Boris and Dieton. Here is nog ding eraan, so die vrou koop vir jou iets om aan te kou. So die vrou, probably the mother of the girl in stanza 7, geef vir die bedelaar nog ding eraan en sê hy moet vir hom iets gaan kry om te eet. So she gives him more money and she tells him, use this money to go buy something to eat. Click again, the lights turn green and the cars leave. And then the Tsotsi is laughing. The Tsotsi pluk om an sy seer arm en lach. The Tsotsi rek die beerlaar uit die pad uit, so he pulls him out of the road. And he laughs. The beerlaar weet dus dat die geld wat die vrou vir hom gaan gee, of gegee het, dier die tsotsie gevat gaan word. So by laughing, the beggar knows, okay, all my money that I just got from these people will be taken by the tsotsie. If we look at the last three lines there, die vrouse woorde word ironies gemaakt, dier die lach van die tsotsie. So the woman's words are being made ironic by the word, uh, the laughing of the tsotsie. Ons as leesers weet wat die ware story is. So we as readers know what the truth is. Ons weet dat die geld vir die bedelaar gegeef word, nie vir die bedelaar gebruik gaan word nie, maar eerder gebruik gaan word om vir die tsotsi drank te koop. So we know that she intends the money to be used to buy food, but we as the reader, knowing the background of the person walking with him, not being a friend, but being a tsotsi, we know that the money she gives him is not going to be used for the food, that it's going to be used for the tsotsi rather to go and buy alcohol. And then again, polis and dieton, which we have explained a thousand and one times. Good. And that is the end of the robot by Erstelan. And that's your life's work. Ta-da!